Tonight, we're going to use this telescope to go into space and capture a butterfly. Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. We're going to use my usual setup, the little cute but still expensive but really good and very classic uh, setup to go ahead and capture a butterfly in, that's flying uh, in space. And that particular butterfly is a nebulae, obviously, you guessed it. And it's a nebulae that's right next to the star Seder. That's uh, pretty, pretty, pretty bright. Um, and we're going to point it to the star and the nebulae next to it is, with a bit of imagination, does look like a butterfly. And uh, today is actually uh, more or less the full moon and we have thin clouds. So it's gonna be a tough uh, situation. I am using today a small refractor an autofocuser, a computer to control everything, a fairly cheap small mount, and a cool camera uh, that's colored camera. It's the 533 MC Pro. And in here, I have a filter that is uh, uh, the Optolong L-Extreme filter. It lets me uh, capture only the band passes, the colors that are useful from that nebula that we will capture. And the point of that is that we're going to reject a lot of the light pollution. But still, it's during a full moon. If I were using a monochrome camera with single band filters, I could choose to capture one of the colors of the nebula that it emit, emits a lot of that's in the red spectrum. And the red spectrum is very resistant to moonlight. The blue spectrum is not resistant to moonlight. So if I could use a filter with, that captures only the red, it would be much better. But this filter captures a small sliver of light in the red and a small sliver of light in the blue, which means that today's a challenge with the full moon that a small sliver of light in the blue will basically be um, a, a gateway point for moonlight pollution in addition to the usual Tokyo light pollution, because yes, we are in Tokyo. So the way that I'm going to do this is my astro camera here has the ability to cool itself. We're going to cool it to around minus 2 degrees Celsius. And when it's cooled to around two degrees Cel minus 2 degrees Celsius, there's much less thermal noise. So I, I can expose it for longer period of time without suffering too much from the noise that you see in typical DSLRs when you do long exposure photography. Uh, which is uh, what we call thermal noise. So we'll be taking exposures of 60 seconds long. That's a good exposure time that I have determined for my setup under the conditions that I work in. And the trick is we're gonna take a lot of those exposures. I hope to take between 200 and 400 of those exposures for at least three hours total of imaging on that particular target. This is because targets in space, they're very, 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 very faint. There's that. But there's a second reason is that even if they're faint, I could get away with much less long exposure time in total if I were in a darker area or the moon was not shining. But because I'm in Tokyo, because the moon is shining, I want to collect as much SNR or signal to noise ratio as I can. And that's one of the main reasons why I'm, I am exposing so long because the speed at which the useful signal from our butterfly grows is faster than the speed at which the noise from the light pollution grows. And so the longer we have on the target, the more we can increase the signal to the light pollution noise and other sources of noise ratio. And that's the exercise that we're doing tonight. My setup is fully automated. I have a computer that's connected to everything and that is really the quintessential setup for the serious deep sky astrophotographer uh, when they are especially beginners. Anyway, we'll let this do its job. I'll remove the covers so that we're ready for exposing. And that's all that I need to do. I'll be back inside and controlling everything via software. And we'll see the result once we come in tomorrow. And now, through the magic of editing, we are two days later. Uh, the first night, the clouds rolled in early in the morning at around 1 a.m. The second night, we had a decent night, but with some like high, thinly veiled clouds um, throughout uh, the night. Across both of those nights, I managed to take a total of 398 usable exposures. So that's 398 minutes of total exposure. 
because it's something that many people don't realize. You, you can take pictures of nebulae or deep sky objects uh, across multiple nights or even across multiple years. Keep all of your data and then you can have a gigantic set of data to get like the best image possible. It's because those objects, they don't change at least from our scale from our point of view it's like if they do change it means there's been a supernova or some weird um, event that actually happened otherwise they're like pretty much static at our uh, time scale that we're used to it's super cool anyway with those 398 exposures what you can do is use a software like deep sky stacker and mix them with what we call calibration frames i use software called pix inside it's basically it basically does the same thing and we stack all of those frames together it's like it's as if you were taking transparent pictures and putting them on top of one another uh, or layers in photoshop or in gimp um, so it's just like you stack all of those pictures and by doing that you're almost like simulating a continuous exposure of those 398 minutes it's not exactly as good as that there is a per meter which is basically the read noise of the camera that basically doesn't make it as good as such a long exposure but if we were to try to take a 398 minute long exposure this sensor in our camera would get overwhelmed completely oversaturated and we wouldn't be getting anything so that is the best way to retake really deep sky object photography and it's awesome and here is the result this result is not processed so i just like look at the result raw and those you can see it's very noisy first and it's also like not a lot of color the first one and the second one we're going to try to see what we can do about this so i use a piece of software called pix inside for that processing but it's mostly curves so it's something that can absolutely be done in photoshop as well and using this processing i obtained this image you can see it's more colorful but the noise is still horrible that's because the noise is still is so bad that my normal noise cancelling techniques really in my uh, software didn't really work as well as I wanted I get blotchy results which is really not what I want after this I tried my final step to get rid of the noise which was topaz the noise a, a paid piece of software but that can give get great results and this is what we get the noise is mostly smoothed out but there are some cave outs with using topaz the noise sometimes the program introduces structures that didn't exist in the original image still I quite like the end result and I think we can totally see the butterfly that we can captured in space and I love this kind of object you have to imagine this is a huge cloud of ionized gas bombarded by energy from nearby skies and that's why that gas emits light because it, it transitions across energy states for individual atoms in that gas it's mind-boggling that normally we have this in space this is like light years across it's humongous distances but also that from Tokyo from my roof balcony in one of the most light polluted areas in the on the planet under the full moon I'm able to capture this and this is the magic of astrophotography I love this hobby and I hope that this can communicate how cool of an activity this is with that, that's pretty much it for this video. I'll likely have separate videos that go into the processing. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. If this is the kind of content that you like about astrophotography and uh, tips and tricks related to that, feel free to go down below, click that subscribe button, that like button, and uh, you know, leave a comment with any ideas or suggestions that you have. Again, thank you so much for watching. Whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars, and I'll see you next time.